Hello and welcome to a short instructional video regarding finalizing the grades for the report card. In this video we'll demonstrate how to complete manual overrides for particular students and how to print a report card. I'll start by representing that I'm currently in reporting term T2 and I've selected a math class. Here I'm in the assignments view and you can see the assignments that have been completed to date. Note that these assignments have a, the green S next to them, representing that scores have been entered into the associated clusters. The scores that I enter into these particular clusters are then used to populate this final grades view. Here, the final grades view represents the different clusters in this example, a second grade math class. These clusters are what are represented on the report card. Each column represents a different cluster, and you can see the calculated score for the different students as you look down the cluster. The scores are calculated by using the last three scores entered for a particular student for this particular cluster. The scores are accumulated throughout the year. These scores are not specific to one trimester, but will collect the most recent three, regardless if one of them was one of the assignment scores was entered in trimester one, and two were entered in trimester two, and so forth. Notice that I have a couple of blank clusters. At the end of trimester two, I have yet to instruct and assess students on these particular clusters. So for now, I'm going to right click or control click on the column header and choose quick fill. I'm going to enter in the value of not assessed, NA. And I'll choose save. Next, I'm going to look over the student scores to see if there are any students that I felt should have a higher or a lower score than the calculated score. We'll call these manual overrides. Let's imagine I have evidence to support that this student was a 3 based on all of the overtime work that I've done with the student in the classroom. Simply click on the cell and key in the value of a 3 and choose save. You notice that the manual overridden cell appears black in black font compared to the other cells which are calculated scores which are more of a maroon color. Another way you can tell this is if you hover over a particular cell notice that it says entered grade 3 and calculated grade 2 in the pop-up. Again that represents the entered grade 3 being higher than the calculated grade, that represents a manual override. Here if I hover over one of the calculated scores that has not been overridden, the entered grade is equivalent to none, meaning that it's still using the calculated grade. Whatever is listed in this view is what will appear on the final report card when I choose print. It's important to pause and point out that a manually overridden score for a student's cluster is only going to have an impact on that particular trimester, in this example, trimester two. The manually overridden score will not impact trimester three. That is designed intentionally so that the student's growth will be portrayed accurately in later trimesters. So, to review, we represented how to do a quick fill for columns or clusters that have yet to be assessed and we represented how to manual override a particular cell for a particular student. Let's imagine I made a mistake where I was a little hasty in providing this student a manual overridden score, and I want them to return back to the calculated score. What I'm going to need to do is put my cursor over top of the cell, hold down the control button, so I'm right clicking or control clicking on that particular cell, and I need to choose revert to calculated grade. Once that's done, I'll choose Save. 
And notice that the score now re reverts back to the calculated score of a 2. And again, if I hover, I see that the entered grade again is none. Before I go to print report cards, I want to make sure that I have or, um, the necessary comments in these different comment columns. Comment columns always have a blue C symbolized, and they're also narrower than the rest of the clusters. To enter a, a comment, where appropriate, I double click on the cell and I can start keying in a, a comment directly into this window. Notice that there's a character count. I'm not to exceed the characters here. Some teachers do choose to compose their comments in a Word document and use a spell check of that word processing document before they paste them into this comment box. Be warned that if you paste in too many comments, this will turn red down here, highlighting that too many comments or too many characters were introduced. Ultimately, if you have too many characters in this box, you will see overlap on the report card. So be judicious with the characters that you enter here and remain within the guidelines. When I'm happy with the type of comment that I put in here, I can simply choose close. Now notice that a blue C is uh, populated in this cell for this particular student representing a comment has been left and will appear on the report card for trimester two. Again, remember to hit save when you're done. Okay. Let's take a, a moment to highlight one other view that is uh, of great value for teachers. This is called the student view here. When I select the student view, I'm only looking at one individual student. As I look down on the left, I see all the assignments scored to date. And across the top are the different clusters for second grade math. As I look down a particular column and across the row, I can see the historical performance of this student on this particular cluster. Uh, the most recent score attempts were a 2, a 3, and a 2, and the computer is giving me a calculated grade of a 2 for this particular student. So this is a great view to look at historical student growth, as well as to have conversations with parents and so forth about where a student is in the class on a different clusters. I can also see clusters that I've assessed more frequently and clusters that I haven't assessed as frequently. Now, one thing that's nice about this view is I can actually manually override a student's score right here by clicking and just keying in a new value and then choosing save. When I do a manual override here, notice that there's an exclamation point. So it's much easier, I think, to see the manual override as opposed to the previous view where you're trying to distinguish between a black font color or a maroon font color for those manual overrides. As I want to move on to another student, I come up and navigate with these arrows here, right and left, alphabetically throughout the list. If you wanted to do batch overrides, like entering the NA, probably best to do that back in the final grades. But if you want to look at an individual student and try to do individual overrides for a particular column, this view might be of uh, great value to you. One last little function I want to point out is this terms button. By selecting that, it'll expand and show me T1, T2, and T3. We're in T2 right now, but I can look back and see the scores that the student received on the trimester one report card in this first row. And here are the scores that the student will receive on the trimester two report card. So I can see that there are a few more NAs in trimester one and more scores populating in trimester two. And here are scores um, for T3 that are still in progress or being built. Um, and so I can, again, monitor at the end of T3 how this student is progressing and, and reflect on previous report card marks and so forth. All right, so once you've completed your manual overrides for individual cells for particular students, it's time to go ahead and print the report card. I will caution, however, that manual overrides, I would really reserve that for the 11th hour, the last thing you do before printing report cards, so that you don't have to worry about reverting to calculated scores if you do want to make changes. All right, so I'm happy with my manual overrides, and I'm happy with the comments and so forth. There's a nice feature up here uh, near the attendance button. If you click on this little arrow, it will automatically take you back to 
the Power Teacher homepage, and I can come down and select the Reports menu and select the appropriate report card. This is grade two, trimester two, and choose submit. It'll take a moment to run. Once the report card is uh, completed, you can select this view button, and you'll get a, a view of the uh, PDF version of the report card. I can scroll up and down in this document, and I can identify um, if I'm happy with how all the comments and all the scores look on the report card, and finally I can send it to the printer. Thanks, I hope you found a few helpful tips in this instructional video about preparing the report cards and printing the report cards. Until next time, have a great day.